Profitability Ratios Problem 7. Grapefruit Inc. provides the following information for 20x8. Net income, $40,000. Market price per share of common stock, $17 per share. Dividends paid, $0.95 cents per share. Common stock outstanding at January 1st, 20x8, 120,000 shares. Common stock outstanding at December 31st, 20x8, 165,000 shares. The company has no preferred stock outstanding. Calculate the dividend yield for common stock. The dividend yield for common stock, this is a profitability analysis type question where we're evaluating the ability of a company to generate future earnings. This ability depends on the relationship between the company's operating results and the assets the company has available for use in its operations. Thus, the relationship between the income statement and balance sheet is extremely important and used to evaluate profitability. Now, there are many different ratios in terms of analyzing profitability. There's a ratio of net sales to assets, rate earned on total assets, rate earned on stockholders' equity, rate earned on common stockholders' equity. The difference between those two is one uses preferred stock, one does not. Then you've got earnings per share, price to earnings ratio, the dividend yield, and dividends per share of common stock. We're focusing on dividend yield. The dividend yield, what that's looking at, it measures the rate of return to common stockholders from cash dividends. It's of special interest to investors whose objective is to earn revenue dividends from their investment. So there's different types of investors out there depending on the industry too. For example, telecommunications is a great industry if you're looking for dividend return. If you're not looking for a dividend return, then a good industry is to look toward the uh, tech industry like, um, you know, development of computers and technology because a lot of their earnings are just retained to go into growth for the company. So you're banking more on the growth of the stock, not on any dividends paid. But telecommunications, that's an industry where it's typical to receive a good percentage or um, at least some dividends each year as long as the company is doing well. So the dividend yield, the formula for that is dividends per share of common stock. So dividends per share of common stock over and think about what we might divide it over in terms of a dividend yield. Again, if we're trying to determine what the chances of getting a dividend are from investing in this. So dividends per share of common stock over the market price per share of common stock. So over the market price per share of common stock, which that makes sense. Again, looking at or most the biggest use of this dividend yield is to look for, for those investors looking to get a dividend return rather than just growth return. So market price per share of common stock, of common stock. So again, dividends per share of common stock, which we're given that. It's 95 cents. Now there's no preferred stock here, so we don't have to worry about you know that being you know factored in with both because we're focusing on the common here, right? This is a dividend yield for common stock. We could do a dividend yield for preferred stock, but that's not what we're asked about, and that is the formula. So, and usually dividend yield is focusing on common stock. If you're not told anything, it's gonna be for common stock. We're told 95 cents. So the numerator is 95 cents per share of common stock. So we're going to divide that by the market price per share, which is $17 per share of common stock. So $17 per share. So we just take 95 cents per share, divide that by $17 per share for the market price per share. We're going to get 5.59%. 5.59%. And that is the, again, the dividend yield is the rate of return to common stockholders from cash dividends. So a 5.59%, and this is of special interest to investors whose objective is to earn revenue dividends from their investment. Because the idea here is if there's no dividends paid, like in many technology industries, then that's going to be zero and you're going to have a 0% return. And if you're looking for dividends rather than growth, you're not going to want that. So this is important to certain types of investors. It's one of those ratios that's very important for them, but not all important. So it just shows you how important some ratios are to certain types of people, certain types of investors over others. And it really shows you that these ratios are extremely helpful, but they're very specific to what you're focused, what you're looking at when it comes to the, the various items of the company and the financial statements.